Hello again, I am Jim Bob, and welcome to Farming Simulator 19. The long wait is finally over. The game is now out and has been for me for about ten and a half hours, ten three quarter hours or so, and I've played for most of that, just kind of messing around in game, not really doing anything, just trying out a couple of different vehicles on contracts and having a bit of fun with it and, and having a look at the visual changes as well because there are a few so uh, let's have a quick run through everything in a nice simple easy to understand little format uh, and then we'll jump into a let's play um, and, and get everything up and running as quickly as we can so uh, first off let's have a quick look at the options page here uh, a lot of this is pretty much the same as you would expect uh, this top option here for super sampling resolution this is because I'm on a PS4 Pro so I can render up to 1440p rather than uh, standard 1080 or I can do it in 1080 at normal render quality or enhanced uh, for full 4k rendering I would need to have a 4k TV which I don't have but I can render at that quality hopefully it'll still translate quite nicely in the videos and you should see something you know pretty nice PS4 Pro only records up to a maximum resolution of 1080p regardless. So uh, yeah, hopefully the uh, the visuals will still come across looking nice and crisp and, and relatively sharp. So uh, We have the field of view control as before. This ranges from 45 degrees all the way up to 90 degrees and this determines where your uh, camera is centered on your vehicle and determines how far in and out you can zoom as well. Uh, 90 degrees will give you the furthest distance zoom but will also give you a very wide angled fisheye kind of lens uh, which will distort the look of your cameras uh, of your vehicles at, at certain distances as well. So uh, 45 will get you really close and really give you that sense of wow this looks big but will also have you incredibly far forward inside the vehicle that you won't even see the edges of the windscreen. So yeah, play about, find something that you're comfortable with and then you know, feel free to kind of mess around with that. But you know, experiment, find something you're comfortable with. You can only do it in this menu though. So you can't do this while you're actually playing. You have to come back to the main menu and this is where you can change your field of view. Uh, and then you can change the size of your HUD as well. For me, 100% is too big. I like to scale it down a little bit. Gives a bit more real estate on the screen as well when we do that. Uh, so mine's set at 70%. Again, experiment with that. Feel, find something that you, you like the look of. Um, if you're playing on a bigger TV, then you can afford to scale it down a bit more. If you're playing on a small screen, don't make it too small because you'll never be able to read the HUD. And then invert Y look and the music settings. You can change these while you're actually in the main game itself. So you don't have to do this here. Uh, you can obviously set your levels and then you can play about in the game and tweak the levels as you're playing. Uh, I like the fact that we can do that in the game as well. Uh, we do have a mod hub, as you can see. There's nothing in the mod hub at the moment other than DLCs. And this, these are the DLCs. So uh, there is this Mahindra Retriever 1000 Limited Edition, which is popped up in the mod hub, but isn't actually available on the store yet. So it'll, if you try and click, uh, click it and try and buy it, it will tell you content cannot be selected. At least time of recording anyway maybe a little later today that will actually go live I'm not sure yet we'll have to see uh, the John Deere Gator was part of uh, my season pass so uh, I have the Gator this is the Mahindra Retriever 1000 the standard version this is part of the pre-order bonus so again came with the game and we also have the New Holland T6 Blue Power now this is PlayStation exclusive so Xbox users unfortunately will not be able to use the Blue Power T6 much like in Farming Sim 17 there was the Blue Power T7 which again was exclusive to PlayStation uh, this time it's a T6 in Blue Power uh, so once again unfortunately xbox users will not be able to use that but maybe if giants are feeling very lucky and very kind we may possibly see the t7 brought in as a mod you know and we'll be able to use that as well that'll be nice to see if that actually happens or not and then we have the categories along the top you can tap through these using l1 and r1 show you all the various different categories and then you have just a category screen here so you've got medium tractors and cars these are the only two at the moment because this is all that we have so the tractor in medium tractors and in cars the three versions of the gator or retriever 
Uh, we are going to get a series of mods released from Giants over the next number of days. So uh, we're going to get uh, the case 1445, uh, which, sorry, 1455, uh, which is that you know, old school uh, case tractor that we had in 17. That will be released from Giants. Uh, we'll also be getting the 1660 combine from, uh, from case and the header, that's the starting combine that we had in Farming Sim 17, that will be with us, hopefully this, you know, within the next day or two. Uh, on top of that, things that we definitely know are coming, uh, the Big Bud pack will be coming at some point. Don't know how long we'll have to wait for that one, but it is definitely coming. Uh, we will also be getting the Ursus uh, round bale trailer, the auto load trailer for round bales. That'll be added in as a mod pack and should be in by the end of this week at the very, very latest. And we'll also be getting the Ursus Round Bale Wrapper as well. Uh, the little toe behind Round Bale Wrapper. That'll be added in as a mod from Giants. Uh, confirmed to be coming in the next few days. Uh, there are other things on the way as well that we know about. Uh, the Agro Star, the Deutsche Agrostar Agro Star has been confirmed as on its way this week. Uh, and beyond that, there are a number of different extras that I expect us to see pretty, pretty soon over the next uh, days to weeks. So I expect the Terra variant to make an appearance because it's not in the base game. Uh, I'm pretty sure we will also get the IT runner pack and there are loads and loads of other little things that we could see as well. There's currently nothing from Liebherr in the game at all. Now it may be that the licensing deal with Liebherr has expired and hasn't been renewed or it may be that uh, those will be coming as mods. So there's no Liebherr telehandler, there's no Liebherr wheel loader. Uh, also, the JCB equipment is a little thin. We have a couple of tractors, no skid steers, no wheel loader, no telehandler. So we might possibly see some of those make their way in as Giants mods to flesh some of those areas out as well. We currently only have one wheel loader available in the game, and that's the new New Holland one. So, yeah, mods will definitely be coming over the next few days. And, uh, you know, hopefully... Uh, as soon as the modders start getting to grips with coding for 19, we'll start to see some mods dripping out on consoles uh, from modders as well. But there we go, that's the mod hub. Nice and simple, different UI to what we had last time, different layout. Uh, I have to say, I kind of like the way that looks at this stage, but with hardly anything to actually look at, it's kind of hard to really get a feel for it. So over the next few days, as stuff starts coming out, we'll start to get to see how that works a little bit better, I think. Uh, we do have the tutorial section as before, so you can choose various different tutorials that you want to do, and like most people, those will probably get avoided. <laughs> uh, multiplayer runs pretty much exactly the same as before in terms of setting up a, 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 you know, a game and getting people to join you, that hasn't really changed. The way people connect hasn't changed either, at least for console users. Obviously, the internals of multiplayer, once you actually get into a game, have changed. And if you haven't seen the Giants live streams, um, I do recommend you go and check those out because it'll go through multiplayer and actually show you how some of those new features work. Uh, and then we have career mode. And career mode has changed. I'm just actually going to get rid of that. There we go. It's just one of the files I've been messing around on. So, uh, console users have 10 save save game slots as you can see we're going to jump in on this first one here and these are the three choices that we have new farmer farm manager and start from scratch and these kind of replace easy medium and hard so uh, new farmer gives you everything that you need to get started you'll have a farm with some equipment and some land and you're pretty much good to go just jump in and you can start farming straight away uh, also on the ravenport map there will be a little optional kind of little walkthrough tutorial to show you how to kind of operate some of the equipment if you've never done it before. You know, that has always been a feature on the maps. So in Farming Sim 17, that was on Goldcrest and you had the option of doing that little tutorial at the start. So go to this vehicle and do this. When you've done that, take this vehicle over there and do that and so on and so forth. And on Farming Sim 15, that was on Bjornhol. Uh, you know, optional whether you want to do it or not. And it's only on the Ravenport map. On Felsbrunn, you just jump straight in and you're left to your own devices. Second mode is Farm Manager. So in this, you start with quite a lot of cash, uh, 1.25 million, in fact. But you have no land, no vehicles, no farm. It's entirely up to you to 
choose where you want to buy your land, where you want to get set up, what farm you want to have to start you off, uh, you get to choose everything and you have quite a nice bit of cash to do that with. And then you have start from scratch mode, which is essentially the same as farm manager, but with a lot less starting capital and with a much tougher economy. Prices are lower and uh, there are all the gameplay elements are set to their most realistic setting. So uh, much more hardcore in some respects than farm manager. These are the two that I think most people are going to use. Uh, but we're going to jump in on New Farmer just so I can show you very briefly uh, some of the visual changes. So this is our character creation screen. Uh, it'll default put your name in based on your PSN profile or your Xbox gamer tag. So you can uh, uh, you you can kind of mess around with some of these settings, but your character name is pretty much fixed. You can't really change it. You do have a choice of uh, limited character types both male and female uh, there are four <laughs> four hairstyles to choose from and there we go that is the four hairstyles <laughs> not exactly a, a big change or a big choice uh, and then hats uh, lots and lots of hats uh, essentially most of them are kind of just black caps with a different brand on them some of them are colored caps and of course you've got the farming simulator or if you're German uh, the Landwirtschafts, uh, you know, branded caps. I'm going to stick with the farming simulator cap. You can throw a jacket on as well if you want to have like a, a leather, you know, waistcoat, you know, on your farmer. Then you have that option as well, and you can throw on a pair of sunglasses as well. Uh, I think we'll stick like, uh, yeah, we'll stick like that. I think. And then of course you can change the color of your shirt as well, and you have a lot of colors to choose from, as you can see whole list of uh, different colors so more to choose from than before which is good uh, it's still not an amazing choice of options overall but you know it's better than we've had before there's a few more options in there we don't all have an, an identical looking farmer now there are a few scopes for visual you know for, you know for facial changes uh, for hairstyle changes there's no beard which really disappointed me I really wanted to have a beard on my character to match my own big beard but unfortunately that's not to be um, and the clothing options well, I'd say I'm a little disappointed that we just have a shirt or shirt and jacket you know very little to choose from there a couple of branded t-shirts would have been quite nice but never mind uh, so there we go create your character and then as before you can choose what you want to add in so you can take individual pieces out like that uh, or you can take them all out and put them all in entirely up to you what you want to do just you're going to do multiplayer make sure that if you're adding in other stuff that the people that you're going to be playing with also have that stuff or they're not going to be able to join you and then you go into the map itself so we're going to get a, a sort of a little look around on Felsbrun to start with and the reason I've gone in like this is because I'm going to be starting a, a Felsbrun let's play but on farm manager so I just kind of want to show you the default kind of starting setup that you would normally see and then when we do our Fells Run playthrough, we'll start it in a slightly different way. It also gives me an opportunity to kind of show you some of the other features that are in game. Now, obviously, we know a lot of the important stuff, you know, like new animal pe placeable pens and placeable farms and all that good stuff, and uh, new contracting system. Uh, a lot of new equipments, you know, some brands have disappeared, others have had their lineups changed uh, a little bit or a lot, depending on the brand, and a lot of new brands have been added in as well, uh, so we'll get to see some of those in a moment, and the store has changed dramatically as well, that is the big, big change. So, uh, if you're not familiar with the basics of the game yet, we recommend going through the first two tutorials all taking the guided tour of Ravenport and obviously we know what we're doing because we play this a lot <laughs> already and you know we're established farmers now been playing farming sim since farming sim 15 and while certain features have changed the basics are still pretty much the same so uh, this is the default kind of farm layout here on Fen Felsbrunn so we have our farmhouse here uh, this is the placeable farmhouse uh, it costs $350,000 or euros or pounds when you're buying one of these. 
And just walking in through the front door, if you look in the control box, you can see L3 pops up and we can sleep. Now, we can only sleep from 9 p.m. onwards, and then you can select how many hours you want to sleep for. Uh, if we try and do it before then, we get you're not tired, and it doesn't let you do it. It's just a way to skip the night. The other important thing that the farmhouse does is it sets your respawn point as well. So if you build a custom farm somewhere on the map and you have one of these farmhouses on it, that then becomes your default spawn point when you next load the map up. So, uh, for example, uh, if we had, say, a farm over by field 24 and 32 over in sort of towards the bottom right corner, if that was where we are, our farm was set up, now, instead of spawning in at this location, and we, if we had a farmhouse over there by 24 and 32, that's where we would spawn in next time we loaded the map up, and so on and so forth. Uh, we also have this kind of scenic barn over here. Uh, it's kind of spacious in here, but unfortunately it's such a low height that only the smallest equipment is really going to get in here. Uh, anything, you know, even medium tractors aren't going to get through that because the lights and uh, beacons and stuff are going to catch on that roof. So it's nice, but you can't really do that much with it, which is a bit of a disappointment. Uh, none of the lights can be switched on through light switches. You can't open the doors. We've kind of been spoiled with a lot of interactivity on buildings through mods. And, and now we're kind of going back to very basic stuff in terms of uh, functionality. It's basically it's just a very pretty piece of scenery. Uh, and doesn't really give you any options or serve any purpose other than to just look quite nice. Uh, we do have this uh, decorative uh, sort of vehicle shelter here. This is not in the traditional kind of shelters or uh, vehicle sheds section. This is in decorations uh, and is keyed specifically to this map, as is this. And the farmhouse as well is actually key to this map. Um, the placeables themselves, uh, some of them are very much map specific. So there are a lot of placeables on the Ravenport map that will not be available on this map. And this farmhouse here will not be available on Ravenport. There's only one farmhouse and you don't get a choice. It's this one on this map or something a little bit different on the other map. So we just quickly scroll across to placeables and go down to farmhouses here. You can see here, this is the farmhouse. We only have this one. It's 350,000. It's the one that I've just shown you right in front of us. However, if you look at the picture on the sec on the little tile here, the section for farmhouses, that picture is the picture of the, is, is the farmhouse that you would get on Ravenport. And you would not get the option for that one. It's keyed to that particular map. So I'm not quite sure why Giants have decided to kind of handcuff us a little bit like that. I get that, you know, they want to have placeables that match the region that's being mapped. But I do feel that's a little bit too handholdy to say that you couldn't put the American-style farmhouse on this map because it wouldn't fit aesthetically. Uh, I'm not quite sure how I feel about that. I do think that's probably a little bit of a step too far from Giants there to restrict us like that. I'm not really sure why they've done it because going forward when mob maps come out, are those choices going to be still locked or is it actually going to give us a choice of either or farmhouse and if that's the case why don't we have that choice right now it just seems very strange not quite sure why uh decorations on this map you can see that we have a farm barn a farm garage the storage shelter and the sandcastle and that's it but on ravenport as you'll see in a moment very different selection of decorations so again the decorations are locked to the specific maps, and I don't understand the reasoning behind that. Uh, I, I don't like the restriction that's been automatically imposed on us there. Seems a bit much. Uh, in miscellaneous, we have the pressure washer, a vehicle workshop, uh, a wood chipper, and a water butt. And animal pens, we have our selection of pens, as you've probably seen in all the various different videos and uh, screenshots and forum posts, etc., and dev blogs that have gone out. Silos, these are the same, uh, so uh, regardless of the map, so we have a standard grain silo here, which is 100,000 litres, we have a larger one here for 200,000 litres, and then these large extension silos, which are actually a bit smaller than this one here, with the you know, this middle silo here. 
these extensions are smaller than this, but they offer an extra 100,000 litres of storage. They're kind of nicely balanced size-wise, kind of between the two there. So uh, I like the design this time of the round, large you know, uh, silos rather than the very long, tall, thin ones that we had before. Uh, the hayloft hasn't really changed. That's the same as before. Uh, we do have bunker silos as well, and these will put down a sort of a, a white base underneath the silo which will remain in place if you then delete the silo and remo remove it from the map. The white base that gets put down will stay there. So something to bear in mind. And then we have sheds, and we have three sheds to choose from. Uh, we have a smallish kind of shed, uh, which is a pretty nice kind of size. Uh, we have uh, a monster shed here which is massive in terms of its length goes back really really far and you can see closed walls on all three sides and then the opening at the front uh, and then we have uh, sort of a slightly more even more expensive shed which is actually a bit smaller but uh, open sided on all ends and uh, a lot taller as a universal height as well so those are the three sheds that we have to choose from uh, not a huge selection but uh, hopefully we'll start getting a lot of placeables. In fact, I did see a tweet earlier this morning from Mappers Paradise saying that they are working on some sheds and they will be available on the Mod Hub very soon. So hopefully we should have those pretty soon as well. And that'll give you some more options. It'll be interesting to see if those ones put down a base. These ones all put down a concrete base uh, once you place them around the actual shed itself. And then uh, beyond that, you know, if you have a gap, then there'll just be a gap of some grass to whatever you've, you know, road or area you're connecting to. Uh, it'd be interesting to see if the mod ones do that or if they just place a shed on whatever texture is there. Uh, we'll have to wait and see I suppose. That'll be up to the modders. But there we go. Yeah, this is this is your starting setup. So uh, you get a, a nice little Fiat tractor here with a, a little four Schritt trailer. Uh, we also have one of the new uh, Fent Varios just here, the 500 Varios. Sorry, 500 Favourites. The new Amazon Cedar, um, and then over here is the second uh, one of those, just there, and that has the new RAL three meter cultivator. Uh, and then we have the new New Holland. I say new New Holland. It's actually an old New Holland, but uh, new for the game. Uh, the the uh, TX thirty two with its header as well, uh, and that's parked at just there. So a decent little starting selection of equipment there. Uh, other little new features, you'll see here the field info box that's popped up in the right hand corner, the bottom right hand corner of the screen. You can see who owns that. So for multiplayer, if you've got multiple people and multiple farms, it'll actually tell you which farm owns that, if anybody does own it. Uh, it tells you the fruit type as well, uh, whether it's fertilized, its growth state, so you can see ready to harvest. Uh, and it's weed state as well. You can see how badly it's weeded. Um, and then that'll disappear. And it only pops up when you're on foot. So if you're driving through the field in a vehicle, you won't see that box unless you actually get out and have a look on foot. Uh, what else? I want to quickly run through before we move on. All right, here's our silo. Uh, so you can see this is the larger of the two silos. 200,000 litre capacity. Uh, quite nicely positioned in this area. And of course, this is in basic setup. This is the beginner setup. So all of this is given to you. Now in Farm Manager, you have 1.25 million and then just an empty lot here. No equipment, no vehicles, uh, and you don't even own this lot either. You would have to choose to buy it if you want it. Now that's all done in this screen here, our main map screen. So to go into purchasing land, you press L3 to open up the land options. Uh, and you can see anything that we own is highlighted like this. And if we select it, we can choose to sell it if we want to. So there we go. So we no longer own that piece of land and we've received 174,648 for it. If we want to buy it back, we can do. And uh, it's as simple as that. Very, very simple, very, very straightforward. Uh, you buy, you don't just buy the field, but you buy the land that surrounds it. And sometimes it's a little parcel of land, like field 13 here. Sometimes it's a quite a big parcel of land that goes around the field, like field 12 
or field 14 you know some of them can be quite big some of them can be very very small indeed uh, and then you get a lot of parcels that are kind of just open areas like this so long stretches of grass that you wanted to work if you want to go and cut that grass you need to own the land before you can do it you know if you don't have that piece of land in your possession you can't do you can't buy it but you can buy and sell land back to the system and you'll get the exact same money you paid for it back so it doesn't devalue it doesn't go up in value uh, but yeah, if you want to, if you buy a piece of land and go you know what I don't want this piece of land <clears throat> Or if you start at this location and then you decide you want to move somewhere else and set a farm somewhere else on the map and you want to close this down, then you can simply sell off the land. So uh, there we go, sold that. Now if you do have land like this that you want to sell and you have placeables, as you can see we have the silo and our farmhouse placeable here, it won't let you do that until you get rid of the objects that you own on that piece of land. So you would have to sell off the farmhouse and the silo and the sheds and so on and so forth that you own on that particular tab before you can then sell it back. But it doesn't allow you to completely tear down a farm effect if effectively and then rebuild it or rebuild a different one somewhere else. So, uh, for example, if you wanted to build a farm over here in this big area, then you could do. And if you already had some pre-allocated land, then you could tear that down and sell everything off and come back in and buy it and on, on your new area over here. So you have options. That's kind of cool. I do like that. And uh, visually, the game is very, very different in terms of the lighting engine. The sun now tracks its position throughout the sky. In fact, if we just whack time up to 120. Oops, it's real time. There we go. You can see the clouds whizzing through and you will see the sun move its position. So if I position my cursor there, you can see the sun moving over my little cursor. And the position of the sun throughout the day as it changes, changes how the light reacts and reflects on vehicles. Uh, it can make the surrounding area you know, look quite dark in places, depending on the angle of the camera, depending on um, you know, the angle of the vehicle as well, and all the paint of the vehicle. Uh, a vehicle with a matte paint or, you know, might not look too much different. A vehicle with a gloss paint can look quite different. A vehicle with a metallic paint can look very different indeed. And as the sun gets right overhead, you know, it really does change kind of the, the illumination on the side on views as that light source is pretty much shining straight down rather than, uh, you know, across from an angle. So that's kind of going to take a little getting used to uh, for you know those of us that have played a lot of farming sim 17 and 15 for that matter where we've had pretty much a static light source and then you know just a you know a sunrise and a sunset in between uh, it's kind of cool but it is going to say it is a little weird to get used to in the first you know first time or, or two that you do it and there are a few other little changes as well there is a slightly new plow texture which you'll see at some point you know, in an upcoming video when I do a little bit of plowing. It's not massively different, but it does just have a little bit more detail in it. It's still 2D, uh, still that same kind of style as it is on 17, but just with a little bit of extra detail, slightly different soil color. Uh, so uh, yeah, we'll uh, see that. Everything else looks pretty much the same in terms of field textures, although uh, I'm sure there will be some differences. You'll also notice how we kind of rock up and down ever so slightly as we're moving as well. There's that kind of head bobbing motion of walking, which is kind of cool. You don't tend to notice it quite so much when you're running, but when you're moving on foot, you do notice this kind of little head bob ever so slightly. And there are a few other little things that are quite interesting and, and subtle little changes as well. If I jump into our Fiat, for example here. Just pull that out here. One thing you'll notice is that in third person view like this, the further away you zoom out, or the closer you zoom in, the more it changes the engine noise. So as we zoom away, the engine gets quieter and quieter 
and if we zoom right in, the engine gets a lot noisier. I actually quite like that. It's a nice little feature. And it's now much quieter in cab, rather than the same kind of level of volume. It's now much, much quieter in cab compared to right outside in third person view like that. That's kind of nice. I actually do like that. And we do have a lot of, uh, even on the very small tractors, we do have a lot of interactive elements as well. Uh, brake pedals that go up and down as we're, uh, and accelerator pedals as we're driving. So if I jump back in and take a look down, you can see the little brake pedal just underneath the steering wheel, just going down as I accelerate, and then the brake pedal going down, and then re reversing the same again. Just nice little pedal movements, and you can see that translate through the the, uh, the side view as well, which is kind of cool. <laughs> it's simple little touches like that that you know make a lot of difference as well. So some really nice little uh, tweaks and changes. Uh, we do have crop destruction in the game as standard. Uh, it is an option that you can toggle on and off, and it only affects the land that you own. So you can see here. We own this parcel of land around here, so if I drive through here, this should leave some uh, tire tracks. You can see there that kind of lighter green as we flatten the grass down a bit. There we go, so we've kind of just drawn a, almost like a, a figure eight, I suppose. A bit of a wonky one. Let's try and turn it into, say, a four leaf clover or something. <laughs> There we go. So we've kind of got a weird little four-leaf clover kind of design there. But you can see how that affects land that you own. Now, if we drive over to here, this is a field that we don't own. We don't own any land here. And we start driving around. Oh, it's getting dark already. But if I turn the lights on, you can see we are not leaving any destruction on the ground. And you can see those clouds kind of rolling through. As it moves into night. And here you can see uh, this field, or this parcel of land, is owned by Uwe Ziegler. There we go, this land here, this potato field. There's our clouds kind of rolling through. As we move into night. Sun is setting in the distance over there. You just see the glow of the sun going down. Uh, it does get very, very different at, dark, uh, at night. Very dark indeed. The lights much, much brighter. You know, uh, a very, very bright white light now as opposed to uh, the lighting that we had before. Uh, and there's a very noticeable difference. It does become very hard to see what you're doing in certain angles and locations uh, at night time now. So... Uh, the dynamic lighting, yeah, is definitely very different to what we're used to. And we'll take some uh, getting used to, some adjusting. This gives me the opportunity as well to show you the uh, how to skip the night now that we are into uh, the early, well, the late hours of the night, early hours in the morning. So we're in here, we're going to press L3 to sleep, and we can sleep for, you know, as many hours as we want between 2 and 11. We're going to skip to 9 hours of sleep. We get this very nice kind of animation. And there we go. It's now morning again. And you'll hear the ambient sounds as well. There's a lot more ambient noise in the game as well. So you'll hear you know, a lot more background noise of, of birds and uh, like that. <laughs> uh, and uh, you'll hear you know, vehicles a little bit better and a little bit clearer as you drive past them. Uh, you'll hear waterfalls on this particular map. There's a lovely waterfall just over there around those mountains. And you'll hear the noise of that water gushing down the rocks uh, as we go past that. There's some really nice ambient sound effects as well uh, throughout the map. So uh, that's a big improvement. So there we go. Uh, let's take a quick look at the options because these are different as well. So let's go through the screens one by one. Uh, first off, obviously this is our map screen. Uh, now, if we start pressing left and right, 
it'll kind of tab through locations a little bit. Sometimes it'll also tab through your vehicles like that and kind of give you a little pop-up to show you where those are. Uh, and if we use the left stick, you can see we can tab through the various different filters. So you can see the growth chart there. Uh, we can see the soil composition. With the two new features that we have here, uh, we just have two stages of fertilizing now. Not three, like we used to. Only two states. Uh, we do have a weed state, which is that pink color. We also have a state of lime being needed, which is that sort of turquoisey blue color. Uh, so two new phases thrown in there. And then obviously we also have you know, any fields that need to be uh, limed are in there as well. And this d will kind of change a little bit. The crops might not change, but the field states will change when you load up this map you know, as the first time each time. So it's not always going to be exactly the same in terms of the field state. Sometimes some fields might need lime, sometimes they might need a plow, sometimes they might be fertilized, sometimes they might need nothing at all. Uh, it, it's, yeah, it'll randomize it a little bit, even if the crop type stays the same. Uh, the, uh, the, you know, the state of the field underneath the crop will vary. And you can also toggle your filters as before, so you can turn off the cell points, you can turn off information points, any farmhouses, you can turn those on and off. Uh, any vehicles or equipment that you own, you can turn those on or off as well. Uh, entirely up to you what you do with the filters. And then it shows you, you know, obviously the usual page, the fruit types. And it gives you a list there of all the different fruit types. Obviously we do have new symbols and that's going to take some getting used to as well. Uh, we're so used to seeing how those crops have looked for the last two years. Now they look a little bit different. <laughs> So we're going to have to adjust to that. Uh, and here, this is our cell point page. So uh, you can see we uh, kind of come down here. Uh, it shows you the various different uh, locations and crops that you can sell in each of those locations. It also tells you uh, how much you have in storage, as you can see as well. Uh, so you've got silos other. This is grain elevators, I believe. And then the silos that we own shows you how much we have in capacity uh, across you know, the whole lot and what the total capacity of those silos are. So there we go. That's our crop cell page. A little different to what we used to see with a few little tweaks, but uh, not too dissimilar. Uh, this is our vehicle overview page. This hasn't really changed at all. This is exactly what we're used to seeing, uh, just with that slightly new UI look for this particular game. The financial tab, again, hasn't really changed. Uh, this is pretty much the same as before. It shows you your breakdown of uh, your income and outcome for the day across the various different sections. We have an animals tab, but with no pens to really you know, to have in position. I can't really show you the animals much at the moment. We'll go through those later on. Uh, and then we have our contracts tab, and this is different. So whereas before, if we just scroll back you know, if you wanted to do a mission on a field, there was a little box or a little icon on the corner of the field. You would click that. It could take you to that field, and then you could see whether there was a job on that field you wanted to do, what the job was, what the payout was, uh, or you could choose to buy the field. Now, you can't do that. You can't jump from you know anywhere on the map to a specific field. You have to buy the field using this menu that we've already seen, and you can't teleport to those maps. So if you want to jump to, say, field 12 from here, the quickest way to do that is to teleport to the grain mill and then walk across to field 12. But when you get there, you still can't do anything. You can't. There's no icon to interact with to take on the contract. It's all done now through the contracting tab. And so you can see we have a whole list of uh, jobs that we can choose from if we want to take on a contract, some will pay well, some will pay not so well. It depends on the work that's involved uh, and how long it's expected to take you. So harvesting potatoes here on Field 9 will offer a payout of 17409 If you have your own potato harvesting equipment, you can use that. Or what you can do is you can uh, lease the equipment that's provided and it'll give you a reduced payout 
Um, so in this case, it'll only reduce it by £604. Very, very cheap to do this kind of reduction, or sorry, this kind of leasing. Much, much cheaper than um, leasing the equipment that you might need, you know, by taking the contract without leasing stuff. So if you don't have the equipment, or you have very small equipment, just it's going to take you a long time. Sometimes it's better to just take the lease. All the equipment that you need will then spawn at the store. You have to drive it over to the map location and then work the field. And if you're harvesting, then you will also need to deliver what you've harvested to a set location. So you can see in this particular case, we would need to go to Port Northwest. Once we'd harvested those potatoes, that's where we'd need to take them. Uh, we have uh, uh, something a little bit more simple, perhaps. Uh, this one here, look. This baling contract here is offering um, quite a lot of equipment here. So this is for mowing and baling. Uh, and you can see it's offering us a voucher, some mowers, and then five other bits of equipment. It won't show us all of the equipment, uh, but it does, you know, it's, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that you get given on that one if you take the lease. This one here, if there's no plus and then a number, everything that you need for you know, to be provided with is shown, like this one here. We've got uh, a combine with a header and a truck, sorry a, a, sorry, a tractor and a trailer, and that's all you need for this particular job. There you can see we've got a combine header, a header trailer, and then two other bits of equipment, which will be a tractor and a trailer. And you get the idea. We have our stats page, so you can check and keep track of everything that you've been up to, A, in the session, and B, overall per save file, which is kind of cool. That's, again, something we've seen before in Farming Sim 17. Uh, and then we have the game settings, and there are some new add-ons in this area. So uh, we have the choice of naming our save file. That's nothing new. Uh, time scale, anywhere from real time up to 120 with all the usual intervals. Uh, traffic can be turned on or off. Dirt can now uh, be toggled in terms of slow, normal, fast or off completely so if you don't want to have dirty machinery we just can't be bothered to clean your machinery and you don't want it there to you know to suffer as a result of uh, having dirty machinery uh, in terms of increased maintenance you can just turn dirt off if you want to uh, automatic engine start and stop and go braking we know about these we've had these before you can toggle those on or off uh, fuel usage is now either low or default uh, there's no high but if you don't maintain your vehicles, then the fuel usage for that particular vehicle will get very high indeed. So that's something to be wary of. And because of that, we now have an option for helpers to refill fuel, which is a new option. That's kind of cool. So they can buy or have it off like that. Uh, same with uh, seed, fertilizer, slurry, manure. Seen those before. And uh, nice and simple, nice and straightforward. They're all buy or off. There's no option to take from the, the BGA. At the moment, I'm guessing because we don't have a, a slurry pit and a manure pit for uh, you know, you know, pigs or cows, I'm guessing that's why those haven't popped up. They may possibly be get added in there once we throw animals into the mix. Plant growth, as before, off, slow, normal, or fast. Plant withering, on or off, can be toggled. Crop destruction, a new feature for Farming Sim 19 as part of the base game. Obviously, this was one of the for real mods in Farming Sim 17. It's now part of the game. You can toggle it off if you want to. And as we've seen, crop destruction only affects land that you own. So uh, if you want to take a shortcut through someone else's field, you won't damage their crops at all. But if you own the field, you will do damage if crop destruction is turned on. So bear that in mind. Periodic plowing required, you can toggle that on or off if you want to. And also lime, the new lime feature, you can toggle that on or off. Uh, and same with weeds. Weeds is a new feature, you can toggle that on and off as well. So if you don't want to go through the rigmarole or, you know, of uh, weeding your fields, you don't have to. You can toggle that option off. And then also a new feature is the autosave. Now, we haven't had this before in single player, only in multiplayer. Now we have it in single player, and you can have it switched off or set at 5, 10, or 15 minute intervals. And sometimes, if it's been a little while, when you go into a when you're playing and you just press the start menu, it will automatically save the second you hit the uh, the uh, the start menu, the option menu, 
to come into these into these screens here. Second page is our general settings, and again, there's a couple of new bits in here. Uh, so again, we can toggle the help windows on and off, the help icons, uh, colorblind mode, those haven't changed. Money units are the same as before, so pounds, euros, and dollars. Uh, measuring units for speed uh, is miles and kilometers. That hasn't changed either, but this is new, area unit. So you can have it in hectares, as we're used to seeing in Farming Simulator. You can now have it in acres as well, uh, which I really appreciate. I think that's a nice little addition is to be able to actually measure in acres rather than hectares. Uh, interactive zone markers, these are the sort of the check boxes that we see around areas, especially cell points. You can turn those on and off as before. Field info, that's the little box that we saw in the, in the bottom right corner when we walk into a field. You can toggle that on and off if you want to. Uh, the radio the settings haven't changed. Uh, reset camera vehicle, this is if you, uh, I can show you this one in operation if you're not sure what this is. So if we have uh, a camera like this positioned at that angle and we jump out and then we jump back in, it stays in that position. Now if we want the camera to reset back to default like that every time we jump into a vehicle, then we can do that with the reset camera vehicle on. So basically put the camera back in that position, jump out, jump back in, and it resets it to back behind. Personally, I prefer to leave it in the, uh, the position I've set it. That's my personal preference, but you know, each to their own. Uh, dynamic vehicle camera. This vehicle camera will try to stay horizontal to the world. If you don't like it, you can turn it on or off. Uh, invert Y look access. Uh, you've got there. We've also got easy arm controls, turns on simplified controls for cranes. Uh, I believe this will also affect things like uh, telehand um, telehandlers and uh, front loaders and so on and so forth. Camera sensitivity and vehicle arm sensitivity. Um, I have found that the front loader forks <laughs> are very, very uh, unpredictable and fast with that vehicle sensitivity. So that's something to be wary of. Uh, but the camera sensitivity is, is how quickly you can pan left to right and so on and so forth. Steering back speed. This is a new feature. Uh, adjust the speed at which the wheels return to the default position. So if you find that your vehicles are turning back to straight line too fast, you can dial it down. It's default set at 50% and you can set it all the way to zero. So theoretically, they will always stay in the direction that you push until you change them into a different direction. Uh, you can toggle whether you switch to the trains or not. Uh, the trains themselves will whiz around the map and when you jump in it, it'll then slow down and stop and uh, you can jump out and eventually that train will start up again and start whizzing around the map. So you can no longer kind of park a train and leave it in a set location. Uh, that is something to be wary of, but you can um, as I say, take control of a train that's whizzing around the map and bring it to wherever you want it to be. Just be wary that it will eventually start back up again. So, uh, And then you've got your vehicle volumes and so on and so forth set just there as well. And then we have our help screen. And there is the usual kind of breakdown of useful bits of information. You can see, obviously, again, the crop symbols. And importantly, uh, this is where a lot of the some of the changes are kind of listed so if you want to improve your yield it shows you here uh, that uh, to obtain the 65 percent yield bonus you must make sure that you spread fertilizer twice and you'll get a 25 percent bonus for each of those applications so as before we had to fertilize the fields to improve the yield before it was three uh, stages and each one was worth 30 percent now it's two stages and each one's worth 25 percent uh, you also need to spread lime every third harvest on that field, and that'll give you a baseline 15% across the next three harvests. And to avoid a 35% yield malice or drop, then you must also make sure that you remove bad weeds, otherwise you'll lose 20% of the, of the yield, and you need to plow your fields after corn, potatoes, sugar beets, and sugar cane, otherwise you'll lose another 15%. So plowing has now changed, as you can see. It's now after specific crops rather than after three harvests. That's been replaced with lime. Uh, and then you've obviously got breakdowns of all the other little bits and bobs that you might need or want to know as well. So it kind of goes through the whole lot for you there. And even shows you the symbols for straw, chaff, grass and hay and sugar cane and cotton and so on and so forth. It really goes through everything for you. Makes everything nice and simple to see. 
Uh, Raven's Port, or Raven Port, is uh, laid out in a very, very similar way. Uh, it has a default starting area if you go in on basic mode, beginner mode, uh, with a, a farm pre-built for you and a, a selection of equipment pre-loaded. Uh, and then the starting point is the same on farm manager, but with no farm land owned, no vehicles owned. It's up to you what you want to do. And let's go back to the store, because there is that lovely, lovely store uh, laid out by Brands, first of all. So if you want to check out all the new John Deere equipment, you can go straight to Brands and have a look through everything that's there for John Deere. Uh, then you go into your vehicles, then your tools, then your objects is where your pallets are and your big bags for seed and fertilizer and lime and chicken feed and pig feed. You can buy bales. That's awesome. Uh, and of course, the party trick of the store uh, is the ability to really get in there and take a look at what everything looks like and really get in there and have that nice little customization. Some You'll be able to change the tires from standard to Nokian. You might even be able to throw Michelins on a few vehicles. Uh, you can change your wheel setups and see those changes in real time. See the height change on your tractor depending on what tires you've gone for. Uh, change your engine setups and see the engine power going up and down. Choose whether or not to add a front loader and see the framework that gets added in when you do that. I mean, it's just it's such a, a wonderful little feature being able to do this. It, uh, it's going to make things so much easier. You're not sure what something's going to look like. You now no longer have to kind of buy one or lease one look at it and go, hey, well, I don't like that configuration, get rid of it and <laughs> replace it with another one and just waste money. Now you can see everything straight away, uh, which is just yeah, brilliant. I, I absolutely love that. So if we go to medium tractors and jump on a Fence 700, for example, uh, again, we can see what it looks like with Nokians or Trelleborgs. Uh, we can change the wheel setup and we can see the difference. You can also see the height of the tractor get pushed up with wide tyres as opposed to standards. You can choose your engine setups. You can choose to have that front loader on there. I mean, it's just it's so great to be able to see that. We've got a John Deere 6R. This one has... Uh, not the 6R, sorry. I'm looking, I'm looking for the 6M. There we go. Uh, this one here, you can choose whether you want you know, a weight on the front or not. And if you do want a weight, you can choose what size weight you want on there, uh, as well as changing your wheels and uh, changing your engine setup. It's just it's such a wonderful feature. Uh, that's my favorite. Of all the things that they've, that they've done to improve, the garage is the best one. So... Um, there we go. That is a kind of a, an overview of some of the changes, some of the new features, uh, some of the menu settings, uh, the new lighting, uh, the new sleep feature. And when we come back, we will actually be kind of getting up and running on this map, on Felsbrunn. But we'll be doing it on Farm Manager. Uh, so we will have a vacant lot here. We'll have no land owned, no equipment, and it'll be up to us where we want to get started. So uh, please join me for that, and I will see you all again very soon.